My name is Dr Sarah Jarvis. I'm a GP and the author of Children's Health for Dummies. I'm here with Jenny Trent Hughes, who's a family counsellor. We're going to tell you a little bit about understanding bedwetting, giving you some of the facts and the figures that make you realise, I hope, quite what good company you are in and quite what a common problem you're faced with. I get asked so many questions when people come in, so I want you to give me some true facts. Now, is there a common age at which children should no longer be wetting the bed? Well, the reason you get asked so often is because nobody really knows what the answer is. It is incredibly common to wet, wet the bed. And whether or not you have a problem with bed wetting, and the reason the statistics change so much, is because it depends what you mean by bed wetting. Is it twice a week? Is it once a month? The big issue is, has your child ever not wet the bed and then start it again. But really, in terms of how common it is, we reckon at least one in six children of the age of about five still wets the bed on a fairly regular basis, maybe once or twice a week. And about one in 15 children age eight still does. So there is no, absolutely no, normal age. It's just a range. One of the terms also that I've heard that I don't quite understand is primary and secondary. What does that mean? Effectively, all it means is primary bedwetting means your child's never been reliably dry. Secondary bedwetting means they've had a period when they're dry. Usually we say six months, but it could be a little bit more, could be a little bit less when they go back to wetting the bed. Now, the key to that is that it means that almost certainly they know how their nervous system, their body is mature enough to be dry. So we need to know what's triggered it. And that really helps if you're coming in to see me as a GP. It's one of the questions I'll ask first because it will have a big impact on what I do in terms of investigations and looking to what might be the cause. When your child wets the bed, you tend to feel that you're alone, oh. that you're the only person and you're nervous about talking to others about it because you're embarrassed. So actually, it's quite common. It's the last taboo. If you talk to other mothers in the playground, you can bet your bottom dollar, certainly in reception, probably, say, in a class of 30 children, there are going to be six, seven who wet the bed regularly. But who talks about it? You're not going to go up to somebody you've just met and say, and does your child wet the bed too? So the problem is we don't talk about it. Yeah, it's really common. Also, someone said to me that sometimes it's hereditary. Is that true? Yeah, it is, actually. Oh, something else for us to... I blame ourselves. Blame about. ourselves for. <laughs> oh, dear. Do you know, the really good news is that, actually, if you or your, your other half wet the bed, there's a 40% chance that your child will. If both of you did, there's a 70% chance. Now, this does. You're absolutely right. I think if you've got a, a child who wets the bed, and you kind of think, oh, is it my fault? But actually... What you can say to yourself, turn that on its head, say, well, I wet the bed, look at me now, I'm fine now. So actually, it just goes to show, you know, you're normal, so are they. Should I worry if my child is still wetting the bed that there's something terribly wrong? Well, if they've been dry for a while and they start to wet the bed again, you do need to go and talk to your GP because there could be a medical cause or quite often there could be a cause, maybe an emotional cause, some sort of upset, whether it's at home, whether it's at school, whatever. But up to the age of about five, no. It really is very, very much part of the kind of normal variation, if you like. Now, children on the whole, as in so many other things, are a bit unpredictable. Girls do tend to be reliably dry a little bit earlier than boys. But again, there are still loads of girls who are still wetting the bed at the age of five, six, seven, eight. So it's a little bit earlier on the whole for girls than boys, but absolutely not enough to say, because I've got a girl who's not dry and she's five, there must be something wrong. Absolutely not. Do we know why it is that there's a difference between boys and girls? Well, we think probably that they mature in slightly different ways. And we all know that bedwetting is to do with maturing, your body maturing. So the messages that go from your brain to your bladder change, the fact that your bladder is still very small or relatively small, and the fact that it tends to fill up more at night. Add that to the fact that your child may have a really, really deep sleep pattern, and you may find that that's enough to trigger it. Now, having said that, a deep sleep pattern on its own is not going to be enough, because let's face it, we all know a lot of heavy sleepers who are adults. They don't wet the bed. But add that to a nervous system where the, the messages aren't maybe going reliably from your bladder to your brain and to the fact that you've got a small, a small bladder and you may be setting yourself up for almost inevitably bedwetting some or all nights.